my experience with uh, QFR is uh, limited. However, uh, Dr. Srinivas asked me to speak on this topic because he realized that we have uh, procured QFR software in our institute recently. So, uh, having agreed to uh, talk on this, I really struggled in the last uh, few weeks to really activate the program which was not activated and realized that there are so many ifs and buts in this uh, procedure. I mean, there are many uh, uh, places where we can go wrong and there are a lot of uh, fallacies that we have to overcome before getting a proper information that could help us in the decision making in a given case. As we all uh, heard nowadays, everything, coronary vascularization focuses on precision PCI. A lot of importance is given to image-guided and physiology-guided uh, PCI up, up, uh, rather than merely taking a decision based on the coronary angiography. However, still, uh, still even today, most of the decisions are based on the standard coronary angiogram for the lesion identification, quantification, and the planning of treatment. Most of the decisions are taken by eyeballing at, uh, at times by quantitative coronary angiography. So the limitations of this method will be a lot, especially while assessing intermediate uh, angio lesions of intermediate angiographic severity. Hence, the stress is on the image-guided uh, and the physiology-guided uh, procedures to get uh, optimal angioplasty. Well, uh, we all have understood uh, that FFR has uh, become the gold standard whenever we want to assess an intermediate lesion. So the lesion uh, significance, the importance of a significant vertical lesion can be uh, arrived at by using FFR performed in a proper manner. And it has uh, been included obviously in the guidelines. Well, the coronary physiology assessment uh, could be pressure wave based, the more the commonest one which we all use is FFR based and the non hyperemic indices RFR, IFR, DFR has already been uh, um, highlighted upon. The uh, angiogram based physiology assessment is basically without using the pressure wire can be performed using a CT FFR or the QFR by the MEDIS system which has been uh, software has been provided by MEDIS systems and the VFFR which is similar to QFFR, uh, the vendor is different, the fine medical systems and there are many more uh, angiogram based uh, protocols uh, that are available and they are still under evaluation. Various cutoffs for various methodologies that we adopt to decide the significance of a lesion, I will not go into the details of this. This is the landscape of the evolution of non-invasive assessment of coronary physiology. The earliest one was the FFRCT. However, there are certain limitations and uh, it is many times done by the radiologist or the cardiac radiologist with the interventionalist not involved in it. There are some uh, deficiencies with that. And then the VFFR, QFFR, FFR angio and the CAFFR. There are many things. I will not go into the details of that. Well, the QFR is a novel technique which is based on a lot of assumptions, mainly based on 3D computation of standard invasive coronary angiographic data and applying fluid dynamics to estimate the FFR without the use of pressure wires or induction of hyperemia. All this is done by using artificial intelligence and deep learning models. Obviously, there are a lot of assumptions involved in getting at the QFR results. This is the image that we get by adopting uh, the technology based on fluid dynamics and the emulated hyperemic flow velocities wherein we can identify the lesions and uh, quantify. It is an angio based uh, software tool basically which can be put into any computer in the cat lab or nowadays uh, the latest version of the GE cat labs have, uh, in, uh, have uh, adopted this technology. Uh, uh, especially the QFR3 technology and uh, this was uh, very much discussed in the recently concluded Euro PCR. The attraction is that no pressure wire is involved and no adenosine or any hyperemic agent is required. The fundamental thing is we need to have good two angiographic views which are separated by 25 degrees. Can be done online and offline. So one need not, uh, if 
they are interpreting our angiograms later after they have been uh, images have been acquired even in our uh, room we can analyze this offline the cutoff is taken as 0.8 basically it's a 3d reconstructed image one can get the lesion qfr as you can see here or the index qfr and the total vessel qfr to total time needed in the cath lab if you want to analyze maybe anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes and in the beginning we may uh, need more time because there are a lot of things that uh, have to be corrected manually also there is an element of uh, uh, i mean there is a human element involved where things can go wrong as well these are the various angulations that uh, one has to adopt to assess the various uh, coronary arteries and the segments the most important thing that i learned in the last one month when i started uh, trying to activate this program is well the our angiographic quality has to be good we have to acquire synergence shortly after administering uh, intracoronary nitroglycerin a brisk continuous injection of contrast is required we should make sure that the catheter is uh, uh, entirely filled with contrast before the injection and we should acquire cine for at least 3 cycles avoid table movement avoid angle change avoid shifting the table heights during the injection and at least as i already said the two views 25 degrees apart is required ensure that the entire target vessel is well opacified in these two projections and we should use a minimum of 12.5 frames per second of cine avoid uh, vessel overlap and the foreshortening a good angiographic image is the most fundamental thing before we assess the uh, lesions by, by applying the QFR. So the choice of computational flow model in the QFR indices, the, Q, uh, the software offers us two, two different flow models to calculate QFR. It's the fixed flow QFR and the contrast QFR. The estimated from the, it is a, the contrast QFR is estimated from flow velocity in relevant vessel using contrast frame count data from the angiogram. Analysis takes slightly longer but is claimed to be more accurate than the fixed flow QFR. Manufacturer however recommends that the contrast QFR is calculated always, it should always be calculated when the fixed flow QFR is in the range of 0.7 to 0.85. Beyond that we could also use fixed, fixed flow QFR. Well, uh, they all, we can, uh, using the QFR, we can, uh, they, we can have, a, uh, basically, we get a 3D model color coded with pressure indication. We get the lesion specific informations. That there are two projections that we use for analysis displayed here. The pullback curve helps us, helps us in uh, analyzing the tandem lesions and the residual QFR, which could be an estimate of the post-tent scenario, the post-PCI uh, scenario we can arrive at. We can uh, actually perform a virtual angioplasty by manually reconstructing the borders. So validation, there are a lot of trials which have provided some data uh, 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 highlighting the utility, possibility of adopting QFR in our day-to-day -day practice. This is the list of the trials. The, fa the favor pilot trial, uh, trial uh, uh, said that, says that the optimal approach for QFR competition uh, uh, in this, the, the ap approach to derive fractional flow reserve from the diagnostic current, current angiography where uh, computation by frame count based estimation of contrast flow velocity showed favorable results when compared to the standard FFR. Similar uh, uh, analysis in the favor to China and the favor to Europe, uh, Japan, which, was fo which followed this uh, uh, pilot studies, have reported good diagnostic accuracies of QFR both at the patient and the vessel level compared to 2D QC, QCA using FFR as the gold standard. So online computation of the QFR in the cath lab is clinically feasible, superior to a simple QCA for evaluation of intermediate coronary artery stenosis using FFR as the standard method. This was the conclusion in favor to Europe, Japan study. And so also this meta-analysis, which is a pooled analysis of uh, nearly 3,000 patients in around 3,400 vessels, showed an excellent correlation and agreement between QFR and FFR, uh, with the QFR below the threshold of 0.8, optimally predicting the functional significance of coronary stenosis. And the QFR has been compared with IFR also, and here there was excellent correlation and diagnostic performance for both invasive pressure-derived physiological indices, FFR and IFR, regardless of the clinical presentation. 
Well, the recently published uh, uh, Favor 3 China trial, wherein uh, around the 4,000 patients were enrolled. Uh, among the patients undergoing PCI, a QFR guided strategy of lesion selection improved one year clinical outcomes compared with standard angiography guided uh, protocol of treating a lesion. The overall MACE rates were, the, uh, the relative risk of MACE reduction was up to the tune of around 34 percent. Well, uh, the QFR could also help us in uh, deciding about the complete revascularization benefits in older MI patients who are over the age of 75 years as well and where they have multivessel disease. The, adopting this uh, strategy, one can uh, decide whether we have to uh, do the complete revascularization, especially in the uh, setting of an ACS. Uh, the, uh, as we all know uh, from various trials, the culprit only versus the uh, multivessel PCI uh, uh, off late the data what we have accumulated in the last few decades favors the complete revascularization uh, uh, instead of culprit alone in most of the situations. And the, using the QFR in this study again, the similar uh, outcome, similar uh, results were obtained. I will not go into the details of this. Well, uh, uh, we can use QFR for uh, Assessing uh, microvascular disease as well. Of course, uh, this is, uh, has been a little difficult to understand that as we know the index of microvascular resistance one can arrive at uh, using the uh, IFR, using the, uh, uh, we uh, try to arrive at, uh, arrive at the IMR by using the CTFFR. And so also attempts are being made to get the IMR value uh, by uh, adopting the QFR technology. It is still in evolution. The data is still not robust. So this could, uh, if we uh, find this uh, technology working, then it could guide us for the diagnosis of INOCA and uh, decide about the further management in patients with uh, INOCA. Well, uh, uh, we can plan the PCI based on the uh, residual QFR data, which we get when we get the QFR uh, analyzed. Uh, we, the model gives us the residual QFR as one of the parameters and this could help us uh, to assess uh, from, to stand from where to where and what would the anticipated result. And if we have not uh, got an optimal residual P uh, QFR, uh, when we assess the post-PCI result, we can always see where the problem is and uh, uh, see whether there is any other lesion which is unattended and we can fix it. And performing a post-PCI uh, QFR could probably uh, uh, tell us that uh, the optimal result has been obtained. The similar, same, similar things are being done using the FFR to address the residual lesions. So probably by the just angiographic uh, images, one can also get at it, provided all these things are proved in the uh, trials that are uh, about to come. Well, I'll go on to uh, some of the cases which uh, uh, there has been uh, interest in adopting this in the pre-TAVI uh, uh, evaluation also to identify the uh, coronary artery significance of coronary artery disease when we do the pre-TAVI workup. Uh, the results in the initial results appear to be promising needs further evaluation. Well, just to show some illustrations of uh, the cases that we performed, uh, there's a 60-year-old uh, uh, with an in inferior MI and effort angina who had a positive TMT, had a total occlusion of the RCA with retrogridly uh, filling by the uh, LAD by, from the left system. The LAD had a borderline stenosis where the circumflex had a 90% stenosis. The LED was uh, intermediate uh, stenosis and we did offer the, uh, it in the uh, uh, severity of uh, around 50 to 60 percent. We offered uh, uh, bypass surgery to this uh, patient but however he was uh, reluctant and uh, though we were, uh, so uh, we decided to take him for the uh, PCA procedure after assessing the uh, QFR to, uh, to delineate the functional uh, significance of the LED lesions. And here, as we see, the plan was, uh, if the QFR was more than pointed, then plan PCI to LCX and RCA. And if the QFR is below pointed, plan for the CABG. 
as you could see here, the LED QFR was uh, around 0.58. And so again, we uh, convinced the patient that uh, he would be better off uh, by, with a CABG and uh, Finally, uh, we were able to uh, make him undergo the procedure. So at times, it could be of uh, use, use in uh, taking a clinical decision. Another case wherein the patient had undergone a primary, primary PCA during the, uh, uh, when he presented with acute inferior LMI, the lady had a borderline lesion. Again, the QFR was uh, performed to analyze the significance of this. It was uh, found to be significant, and we were able to fix the LED in the same setting uh, uh, with uh, angioplasty. Well, the benefits of QFR uh, basically for the patient is uh, there are no side effects uh, for adenosine, there are no wiring involved, and applicable in uh, diagnostic cases. We can do it pre PCI, during PCI, or post PCI. We can analyze it offline when we are interpreting an angiogram uh, at a later time. So it does not involve uh, repeat insertions of the wire. However, the most important thing is the uh, acquisition of a proper angiogram. The diagnostic accuracy of QFR with FFR has been demonstrated in multiple studies, both in ACS and uh, chronic coronary syndromes. Uh, the thing that we have to understand is techniques derived from QFR have been proposed to comprehensively evaluate coronary circulation and atheros atherosclerotic lesion characteristics both post-PCI QFR for assessing the PCI results, QFR-based indexes for determining physiological disease pattern, and angiography-derived IMR could be helpful in the management, assessment and management of microvascular dysfunction. However, it's important that we understand that uh, there are a significant number of predetermined assumptions when computing flow of uh, functional coronary angiography with QFR, and they are reflected in a wide gray zone of measurements that will still require confirmation by invasive physiology many a times. And studies and trials are required to assess the major clinical endpoints and the cost effectiveness. The use of QFR is not without a stiff learning curve, and we have to have our integrity while interpreting these images because there is a lot of human element involved, especially when we correct the automatically detected borders manually. So if all these things can be attended and uh, attended to, and we get more outcomes data from the uh, further studies involving large number of patients, then probably cure for a non-invasive, uh, non-wire based, uh, non-hyperemia based tool could be useful uh, in our day-to-day -day clinical practice to take decisions regarding intermediate lesions and to assess the uh, post-PCI results and planning a stenting procedure. Thank you very much for your patience.